Hello again, I'm Dr. Mark Brayman, and this is part of the journey of going from the McMansion to the tiny house. And this is my daughter. I'm Heather. I'm 25. I'm a nature lover and adventure photographer. And we have to keep telling you her age because everyone <laughs> thinks she's 16 or 17. Okay? That's right. She actually is an appropriate age to be thinking about a tiny house. If y'all want to come talk to somebody about the fountain of youth, I found the <laughs> secret. Okay, we're not selling that on the website. But lifestyle has a big factor in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So the topic this video is space. So we're sitting down, my wife and I, we're doing planning. How are we gonna make a tiny house work? Can we make it work? What kind of tiny house would that be? And we're looking at these different plans and we've gone and visited some models uh, and to be honest, the eight foot wide typical thing is making us a little claustrophobic and we're having a hard time seeing that really working for us. So the question came, well, what space do we actually use to figure out what we would need? Reverse engineer from there. So we've got the big tape measure out. You weren't there at this point in time uh, that we happen to be doing this. And we went to the kitchen, measured each way. We went to the living room, family room where we spend most of our time, couch, TV, whatnot. Measure that both ways. And we were actually shocked. Not shocked at how much space we used, but how little we used. And what we found is that in both situations, both the kitchen where we spend most of our time and the family room, it was both about 10 by 10 actual space that we used. They're bigger than that, but we actually used about 10 by 10, 100 square feet for primary living spaces. Now we've got a separate little dining breakfast area where we actually spend probably the most of our time, but that could be part of a kitchen easily or part of a living family room. So it was a big aha moment to realize how little space we spent 90 plus percent of our time in as far as living space. And then just today, we were talking about this and sharing this, and we were thinking about Heather and what space she spends most of her time in, other than the kitchen, the family room, and it's what? Your well, magic special bedroom. Yeah. Well, I mean, when he first came to me and told me about this idea of, you know, the amount of space that you actually use, I was like, mm, like, I can sort of see how that makes sense, but I wasn't 100% converted. Um, and for me, I don't feel like I spend that much time in the dining room. I actually really like to eat in the living room because it's more comfortable. So that's even less space that I'm using. We went up and actually measured my bedroom to see, well, how big is it actually? And it was about 13 feet by 12 feet, but the amount of space that I actually use is about it's actually eight feet. by 13. Eight by 13, that's right, eight by 13, yeah. Which is 104 square feet. Yep. So again, we're hitting this 100 square foot thing as, an, as a rule of thumb for typical living spaces. You know, when, you, when you have your couch and your table and your bed or whatever it is you have, in that space you actually only use in a given room about 10 by 10. But I, I will also mention that in my room, I have a twin bed and I think most people have a much larger bed, like a double or king or queen. And I will say that that probably affects to some degree the amount of space that you would need or use. Um, I highly recommend that smaller is better. I had a double growing up for almost my entire life and um, only recently downsized to a twin, and it's actually on the floor, and I love it. It takes up so much less space. So you were already being a little bit creative, like, let's put the bed on the floor. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's not be in the box, let's not be stuck in the box. And relatively speaking, in Mom and I's bedroom, we've got, you know, the master bedroom, master suite kind of thing. They do have a large it's bed. It's ginormous. Yeah. It's, it's, it's way too much. Um, when we actually look at the pathways and how much space we use, we're paying for and managing all this extra space for no real purpose. And it's crazy. What? I think that some of our extra space is actually conducive to messiness. There's more yeah. space to just throw things on the floor and leave them because we don't have to just put them away and <laughs> walk around. So the big space is actually contributing to your stress because you don't have to be as neat and tidy. There you go. And you, it, it makes it so that you're not as close to each other too in the space that you're in. You're actually farther away from each other. When when I was a lot younger, I remember friends coming over to our, at the time we lived in a smaller house and they lived in a, a big house up in Alaska. And they actually said 
to us that they envied us for having this small house because they always felt so far away from each other in their large house. What's interesting is how much space you think you need and how much you actually use you need are very different. Very. Because in my mind, when I first thought of it, when I first was introduced to tiny houses, I thought, oh, that's like way too small. That's not an actual house. But then once I started to realize how much space that I use and what I need and what I don't need, what I can actually live without, um, I started to realize, what, what would I even do with all this space? What would I put in it? I don't want that much space. I don't want to have to keep it up. And just for the record, we were already planning to have an office in our tiny house. Okay? So you can do this. I might have a creative, like, music space. That would be very cool. But the amazing thing is, is you can customize and you can make it so you can switch it up. And you can have the same space be a whole bunch of different things. And that's actually part of what we're planning to do in our journey is figure out ways to make it so you can use the same space for many different things really well and really easy. The art part appeals to me because I love creativity. I love switching things around. I like, I enjoy change because it challenges me. So. Think outside the box. You don't need this massive box of a house you live in. Measure the space you actually use. Do some actual planning to figure out what you could actually live with and be happy with. Simplify, 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 and less is more for a happier, better life. So this is the point in time when we would be very pleased if you would just hit the little bell icon for notifications for when we upload our next video, um, as well as hitting the subscribe that helps support us at this point in our journey. Um, and we welcome any comments or questions. We would love to interact. We would love to get to know you guys. Um, so we will talk to you next time. So our topic this video is space. If you're thinking about downsizing, what kind of space can you actually live with? Invading yeah, that's your space. invading my space. <laughs> <laughs> How much space do you actually need? <laughs> What's too much? It's the real question. How much do you actually like each other? That's important. <laughs>